Well, hello, you are watching the Pure Passion Biz podcast with Akua Hines, and I am Akua Hines, and I'm joined by Scott Warren. Scott is based in the United Kingdom, and Scott, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? So, yeah, um, so what I do is I help those business owners that are struggling with their confidence around getting their prices right, and I help them give that confidence so they know what they're worth and get their true worth for their business. But I also help that business make it sure it's more profitable, more sustainable, so they can get a life they love. So it's helping those businesses finding the right customers for the right prices. Okay, wonderful. And also, too, um, how does your the way that you do business help you to stand apart from your competitors who might be offering something similar? Well, the thing is, I have... I've struggled to find competitors. You know, you would think that, you know, pricing is such a key issue for businesses. You know, we right. need to know how we're charging our businesses, making sure that we get the right value for us, but also making sure that we achieve that. So at the moment, if there is any competitors, I would like to know because I like to always learn. And yet I found no competitors. So how to stand away from competitors I'm kind of a standalone niche business, which is kind of shocked me because I think most people, you know, it is such a key issue for businesses. So how do I stand apart? I have got, no, I have not found a competitor yet, so I can help gauge what I'm doing and how I'm doing things and how I can stand apart and what I'm doing differently. I think it's uh, safe to say that's a pretty great problem to have someone where you are um, a pioneer in the market um, mm. on the ground floor, so to say. And so, I know that you went through a period where um, you were working and um, you achieved success and then things changed and then you had to basically start all over again from the beginning. Is it that journey that led you to creating the business that you have today? Absolutely. You know, sometimes there's always going to be two types of businesses. Those are the ones that have done their personal experiences and want to help other people because they've not, they've been through that situation. And so they don't want other people to go through that situation. But then there's other people that, go from a poor role and want to just carry on, but be in that business. So yeah, so again, for what I've done, so in 2016, I became homeless. I lost everything. High Achiever started off from basically from working a weekend job to being actually being a real one of the top execs in the company. That's what I was doing. But then all of a sudden it went pop. Um, and so from that, from losing everything, and when you lose everything, you've obviously still got things to pay and you've got nothing coming in. You rack up debts, you rack up bills, you understand. But then I kind of dug myself out of my own hole. I got rid of all of those debts. I got rid of all those issues, those problems that we had. And so from that kind of situation I've been in, knowing that actually a lot of people say you've got a real sixth sense, a skill with numbers, you know, your way you deal with handle numbers makes it really easy for your clients. So understanding all of that information, I've been able to help people in the UK really understand about their numbers, about budget process, about understanding about our financial system. The thing is, I was getting a lot of business owners coming along who were struggling to put food on the table, keep the lights on. So they were really finding their challenges because even though they were successful, they were still struggling to make sure that they can actually still survive, achieve a lifestyle that they want, a lifestyle that they deserve. And that's the thing, it's deserve. A lot of people deserve it, but sometimes it's knowing how to get to what you deserve in life and what you can get. And sometimes you need that encouragement. So realizing from that and understanding that, I was able to set it up and help those businesses, not just get them sorted out, but help them to get that pricing right. So make sure that they're charging enough to make sure that they'll be able to put food on the table, pay for some holidays. You know, some people were going out to holiday. Imagine taking your children for the holiday for the first time as a self-employed. That kind of reward that you're given, you know, when you keep that struggling and you do not know what's going on and someone fixes that problem, that achievement goes forward. That's, um, that is wonderful because there are people who might even not be aware that they can achieve those things. Maybe they've never been taught. Maybe they've never been shown. Um, now you said that you're a, you're basically the only um, person you know who's doing what you do. Um, but did you have 
a mentor? Did you have encouragement and support when you were embarking on your business when you decided you wanted to offer other entrepreneurs this opportunity? Absolutely. I, you know, I think I'm the biggest advocate to say that, yes, I have got a mentor and I'm still with that mentor that is supporting me in my journey. You know, we all need somebody to be accountable to, to make sure that we are doing what our tasks are doing each and every day, each week, each month, each year to achieve what we need to achieve to get what we fully deserve. Every single business owner actually needs it. And if you look at every single successful person, not just business owners, look at sportsmen, everyone's got that person, that mentor that they can touch to, talk to, chat to, hold accountable, digress what goes wrong, but sometimes, and digress what goes right. Even though we don't see what goes right, we may do the right thing, it just wasn't the right time, or just something didn't happen, what we have to kind of just tweak, maybe it was just the wrong time, wrong place. That's fine. But it's always really encouraging to see it's always good to engage with a mentor, a coach, so then you can actually be held accountable to achieve what you fully deserve in your business life. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that a mentor can make all the difference sometimes in somebody really crossing that finishing line to achieving their goals. Uh, do you, um, can you name um, a certain event that changed your mindset or business forever? I, I know you talked about your experience with um, being homeless and having to start all over again, but was there something during that time that made you think, okay, I know this is going to be um, a stepping stone towards something that's going to propel me even further. I can't really put any, that's a, that's a really good question. And that's the thing, you know, I've had a little bit of thoughts. I think it's just knowing that will, single willpower, that resilience that I have, I have an inner resilience to knowing what I want to achieve in life. And it's knowing, sometimes it's knowing the why, knowing what you want to achieve out of life, how you want to live your life. And sometimes that can be so powerful that almost you always don't lose it and get into that kind of thing of realizing the opportunity that I've given myself, that will to win, that kind of inner ability, that inner character that says, actually, what I've landed on is this ability to actually achieve a life that I don't even know that I could be achieving and the lifestyle that I can achieve and knowing the opportunity that I've landed myself into where I can have control of what I can do. I don't have to worry about having to have an alarm o'clock at six o'clock in the morning, fight with the cold mornings. I don't have to worry about getting at home at work after a six, 12 hour day, have to scrape the car, cook the dinners, do all of this. I choose when to work, when not to work, I choose what to do, when to do it. I can now choose what I do and that opportunity and that choices I can make and going forward and making more choices. Absolutely, I mean, we are currently two weeks um, after the start of the new year, about two and a half weeks. And this is a time when a lot of people are um, creating goals and creating vision boards um, for people who are considering starting up a business or a charity. Is there a piece of advice that you have to offer to anybody who's up, just looking to start up a business or a charity in any um, field? I think the thing is that I think the simple, easiest advice you can do, if you're going to start a business, if you think about it, do it. And if you want to start a business, land clients. Sometimes we try to finesse things and try to be too fancy. Actually, the first thing you've got to do in business is land clients. And sometimes... You know, I understand about price and everything else. Actually, just landing some testimonial clients, building that bridges, building the bricks, building the foundations. The first thing, a business cannot survive without clients. People say money, but actually the first thing you've got to do is get people through that door, showing how good you are at the value that you're going to provide and build that business, build it up. You don't want to say, right, you don't say to a baby, right, here you go, there you go, all of a sudden it's going to run. You've got to kind of walk before you're going to run. So the first thing you've got to do is land clients. Landing clients, even if you land a few freebies at the start, that's good. Make sure you get testimonials. Build that confidence in what you've got. Once you build that confidence, you land next clients. 
there will be chargeable clients. And then you build more, build more chargeable clients, better clients. And you start to build that base from there. So first of all, land clients. And I think that's excellent advice. Customers really are the lifeblood of every single organization. Um, so what kind of support can your customers receive and your clients receive when they decide to work with you? What kind of support do you offer them um, straight away? So they support with actually getting to know their numbers, knowing what they should be charging, having that person that's there to support them, having that saying that when they go into those sale confidence, having that kind of conversations, being that confidence to say, yes, I am going to be worth what I am because they have that accountability with me. They can report back to me, you know, and we're not just there to say, right, each week do this. We're there to support, be an advocate for them, be there, support them, having that saying, actually, let's go and do that. That's, that's it, actually, done right there. It was just the wrong person at the wrong time or it was the right person at the wrong time. You know, sometimes... We're not going to make sales on every single conversation. But if we keep making and doing the right things, we will get it right and making the right sales and finding that right person for the right amount. It's all about quality, uh, quality over quantity. We always seem to focus in business about having loads and loads of businesses, having loads of people. We want to get the quality rather than get the quantity. I agree completely. And I think that some people, they get discouraged because they plant seeds, um, you know, looking for business leads. And sometimes those seeds don't grow in the time frame that they hoped they would. But later on down the line, those seeds could blossom and they could get that, that customer, that client, that deal that they've been working for. But they never would have gotten it if they hadn't planted those seeds weeks ago, months ago, years ago in some cases. So. And it's just about taking that right action right now and it is just about taking the action and that's what you've got to do is take the action and actually taking the first action is to take those clients get the clients on board that's uh, very sage advice um and so uh, lastly what surprising lessons did you learn as you launched your company um i think the thing is is knowing what i think the surprising lessons are really about actually how many people actually need advice on pricing you know, and how, you know, actually there's so many people out there that just do not understand. There's a little bit of a scientific formula about getting that pricing right and how much is, was, how big it was and how much it was a need for the market. Um, I do, it was a need, but not as big as I thought it would be because, again, it's such a lifeblood of things. If you don't have that structure in place, that foundation block, that cornerstone in your business, your business could be crumbling and you don't realize it unless you get that right, especially right now with the infl inflation. So yeah, I didn't realize how big a need and how much I've landed on it. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And I suppose that um, it's important to analyze the competition too, right? In order to know how to price services and products in the best way. Actually not. It's, that's a really common mistake. And I think everyone says that actually we've got to price according to that. You've got to take it holistic. The price has got to work for you. So the thing is, you could have two businesses. One has got an office, um, got a nice little office, a few staff. So that means they're going to be charging a little bit more because they've got more expenses into that business. They've got business rates, they've got that. You can be doing your business in the same model, but you could be actually having, lucky enough, you've got it in the back office, in a back garden somewhere, so your office, same, almost the same size, but it's in there. You've got no business rates. You've got no staff. You've got less expenses. You can actually undercut the market, still achieve the value do you want to achieve, but also still deliver for value for the customers. So actually, a lot of people make mistakes. So sometimes comparing to the competitors, but they're comparing apples to oranges. So making sure that the price fits you and suits your needs, because each and every business sometimes can be the same, but actually, sometimes it can be totally different because of the way they're run, the bias that's involved in it. Because when you're dealing with humors and emotions, it makes the business completely different into what it's doing. That is wonderful. Um, thank you for sharing those points. I hadn't really considered that, uh, but that is true. Um, we do sometimes offer unique aspects that our competition doesn't offer. So we need to keep that in mind and let our customers and clients know.
And so I know that you say that you do help people in the United Kingdom, but I know that you help people globally as well, right? So I'm in Canada, you're in the UK, but I know that you help people in Canada. And is it worldwide or just specific uh, nations? Worldwide. You know, I'm helping people in Dubai, UAE, you know, United Arab Emirates. I'm helping people in South Africa. I've helped businesses in Australia. So worldwide. And that's that passion to really help those businesses that really want that help to really grow and to get what they fully deserve in their business. Well, thank you so much, Scott. Um, thank you for um, being on the podcast today. And we are going to have your contact information and everything that um, viewers need to know about how to get in touch with you and uh, get signed up with your service and start partnering with you to help enhance their lives and their businesses and the lives of the people in yeah. their inner circles. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much.